Thank you for joining today's presentation. We are delighted to offer this birding and natural history odyssey along the Amazon River, the most diverse watershed on earth. We are thrilled to announce a fantastic opportunity for all those eager to join one of our upcoming departures in January and February 2024. For a limited time only, we are offering an incredible $1,000 discount on registrations made before August 1st. This exclusive discount is our way of expressing our gratitude to our loyal supporters and those who are ready to seize the golden moment early on. By taking advantage of this offer, you not only secure your spot, but enjoy substantial savings that can be invested in other areas of your interest. The detailed itinerary for this departure may be found and downloaded in the handout section in the control bar. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to view on demand anytime at your convenience on our Victor Emanuel Nature Tours YouTube channel. A link to the recording will be delivered to you in an email tomorrow. Now we'll turn to Victor Emanuel for opening remarks and then move to David Escanio's presentation. Afterwards, we'll have a live question and answer session. Without further ado, we'll turn to Victor. For many years, Victor Emmanuel Nature Tours has offered cruises on the Amazon in Peru in January and February. I regard them as some of the best trips that we do anywhere in the world. You are in a lovely boat and then you go out from the main boat in small boats up side streams and you see a incredible array of birds and animals as many as 200 to 300 species of birds eight kinds of monkeys and pink river dolphins and also the gray river dolphins there's always something interesting to look at it is one of the most delightful and relaxing trips we do anywhere typically you go out early in the morning on the small boat go up a side stream come back at mid-morning for a, a rest stop and then go back out if you want for another hour or two before lunch. Come back and have a lovely lunch on the boat in the dining room of the boat, which is glassed in and air conditioned. And from the dining room, you look out onto the forest on the sides of the river as the ship moves to a different side stream for an afternoon outing. You have a lovely dinner. The staff, the staff on the boat does a musical performance every night. It's lots of fun. During the midday breaks, our leaders, who are some of the best leaders in the world, give lectures about the birds and the ecosystem of the Amazon. It is, I say, a absolutely marvelous trip. But there are two things about the Amazon that are misconceptions. It is not terribly hot. It is humid, but it's not like Texas in the summer. It's not 100 degrees. It's typically 88, 90 degrees in the middle of the day. But that's when you're back on the boat relaxing in the air conditioning. In the morning when you're out, or in the afternoon you're out, you'll find it's not unpleasantly hot. And also, there's another misconception there are hordes of biting insects. There aren't. It's not like Alaska can be at times, or parts of Canada or the northern United States, where there are clouds of mosquitoes. Yes, there are occasional mosquitoes, and you wear the proper kind of propellant to keep them off. But it's not an area where biting insects make your trip unpleasant. You will see some of the best sunrises and sunsets you've seen in your life. You'll share this with a very nice group of people with excellent leaders. You'll learn about the richest ecosystem in the world. If you can go on this trip, I strongly urge you to go. We offer it every January and February. You can contact our office for the exact dates. There's, and also before you get on the ship, after you arrive in Lima, you spend a day on the coast of Peru where you see such marvelous birds as the Inca tern, the red-legged cormorant, one of the most beautiful cormorants in the world, and with luck, the Humboldt penguin, one of the rarest penguins in the world. So I strongly urge you to consider this trip. You will find it, as many people have written me after the trip, one of the best trips you've ever made in your life. Thank you, Ben, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in this webinar. Today we're going to talk about the mighty Amazon, the greatest river of all. And my presentation 
it's exactly about birding in this land of superlative with great comfort. Before I start, I would like to bring back some years, about 22 years ago, when Victor Emmanuel came with this great idea of shattering a ship, but instead of filling up with regular tourists, what he did was to bring it, bird watchers. And that was the beginning of a different way to seeing the Amazon. Before that, any journey to the Amazon implies some discomfort. That's not any longer the case. Now we can do it with great comfort. In my presentation, I would like to tell you about our cruise, our program, what makes it so unique and different. I would like also to bring some aspects of the ship and to give you a little idea about our daily program. But before I do that, let's study, let's revise, let's review a little bit that word Amazon. I'm sure if anyone asked you the meaning of the word Amazon, there'll come several images to your mind. I can bring up three superlatives, the Amazon River, or the Amazonian rainforest, or even the Amazon Basin. The river itself, along with the Nile, is the largest one in the world. The rainforest, the Amazonian rainforest, extends over 2.5 million square miles. It's an area equal twice the size of India. The basin on the other side is about 2.4 million square miles. And that is equal to 3.6 times Alaska, nine times Texas, or 14 times the state of California. If you think that's not big enough, think about this fact. There are 15 tributaries that are longer than 1,200 miles. Now, where did it get that name, the Amazon? And that goes back to the time when soldier and Spanish conquistador Francisco de Orellana did explore the headwaters of the river from Ecuador down to the Amazon basin. Was it gold? Was it a gold rush? Not really. The gold in the time was cinnamon. And what had happened at the time is that they got a word that there were large tracks of cinnamon trees down there in the lowlands. And that's what gave them poles to go down, to leave the pleasant climate of the Andes and reach the Amazonian rainforest. When he made the journey, which is something we'll give you in detail during the, the cruise, he got the river named after himself, Rio Orellana, but he needed to finance a second expedition. And that's when he made up all that story of fighting fierceless Indians, and he called them the Amazons after the mythological, uh, the Greek mythology. So that's how the name got renamed as the Amazon, and that's how Orellana lost his own surname to be used on the largest river in the world. Now, let's have a quick look at the Amazon River. It basically cuts South America in two halves, and it flows from west to east. That white dot that you see on the left side of your screen, that is where Iquitos is based, the city where we start that wonderful journey. Now to compare the rainforest and the basin, I brought this plate where you can see that what is considered rainforest also includes the headwaters of the Orinoco River, which is the upper part of your screen. Whereas in the lower part, you see a pale blue area embedded with the green, that's part of the watershed or the basin and you can see the overlap zone. So again, three superlatives there in the very same word, the Amazon. Now let's get into our presentation. Uh, what I'd like to tell you now, it's about our cruise. We spent a full day in Lima, right on the other side of the Andes, the opposite side of the Andes. Then we take a flight across the Andes to the city of Iquitos, where the Amazon adventure starts. And from there, we go 
we go, go embark Zafiro and explore three mighty rivers, the Amazon, the Ucayali, and the Maranhão. Where do we start in the city of Lima? Why we do this? There is two main reasons. The first one, when you are on the west side of the Andes, the avi fauna of the region is completely to that of the east side of the Andes. We'll be in an area that is subject to the influence of the humble current. And for that, we'll take a day tour to Pantanos de Villa and then to the Pucusana village. In Pantanos de Villa, we will encounter huge wetlands packed with Franklin's gulls in non breeding plumage. We may see shorebirds, we'll see dogs, teals, we'll see large numbers of black skimmers as well. Those black skimmers are actually flying from the Amazon across the Andes to the Pacific side of Peru. The reason is. By the time we visit the Amazon, the water level is so high that there are no beaches for these skimmers to feed or to land. So therefore, they're forced to take this long migration. On the other side, the Franklin Gulls are boreal migrants. They're coming from North America during the non-breeding season to feed in these enormous wetlands. What else is in there? Wonderful reefs where one of the greatest tyrant fly catchers of all occurs, the many color rush tyrant. There are also rails, there are water birds, there is the always difficult to find least bittern, so we'll spend some time looking for it. There'll be easier to see birds like the cinnamon teal. And from there, we'll make a drive to the picturesque little fishing village of Pucusana. There we'll take a small boat it's all calm water, flat bay, and we'll look for birds that occur only around the humble current. That includes the Peruvian pelican, elegant tern, and the queen of all, the Inca tern, the most beautiful tern in the world. And on that slide, I'm pretty sure now you're getting to know that you'll see more than one. From Lima, we'll take an hour and 50 minutes flight to the city of Iquitos. That's where our Amazonian adventure starts. I want to bring up this up. During the time of the conquistadores, to reach the lowlands, the Amazon from the Andes, you will need a year of walk into somehow difficult terrain. So what we're gonna do what we're gonna do in one hour and fifty minutes fly is equal to what Orellana did in about 12 months. When we reach Iquitos, we will be into one of the greatest biomes in the world. We'll start our exploration to three rivers, and we will be exposed from that moment to mega biodiversity. We will start exploring the Amazon River, and each one of those numbers represents stops we have made in previous cruises. How we choose the spot? based on water level conditions and bird situations, habitats. We're continuously exploring new habitats. We're continuously getting new data and we adapt and adjust to the best burning areas. So from the Amazon, then we'll explore the Ucayali River and we'll make several stops at either north or the south side of the river. And then we will come down again to the confluence and explore the Marignan River. The reason we do this is because the rivers itself work as international boundaries, but also sometimes, besides working as international boundaries, there are also important distribution boundaries for wildlife, including birds. So once we embark, Safiro will be exposed every day for common birds, birds that we may see almost every day, including the large bill tern, the wonderful black cap donacobius doing their unique choreography. We'll be seeing yellow rumpka six colonies every time we stop near a village. We'll see lineated woodpeckers, probably from the upper deck of a 
Someone share. Oh, yes, there will be two kinds. And we'll always be paying attention to palms with fruits because that's what they love to hang around. After all these common birds, all this wildlife that you see commonly around, how do we find other wildlife? The key is in the fact we have studied habitat where wildlife. For example, we visit two kinds of rivers, black water and white water rivers. And in black water rivers, we'll have a great opportunity to look for the beautiful and absolutely astonishing sun green. In those white, in the other side, in the white water rivers, we'll be exposed to rivering forest. That means that occurs at the side of the river that we call varsia. In the varsia or varsia, we'll look for birds like chestnut cap buffbird, the unique and rare black crested ant shrike. And I want to ask you to pay attention to its scientific name because that will be a topic to discuss during our cruise. Why would a bird that occurs in the Amazon have a name or a specific name after the country of Canada? These are important misnomers that have happened over time. that are very fun to learn and to find out. Because we choose the time when the forest is flooded we'll be able to pull our skiff inside those enormous trees. And when you pull your, the skiff inside there, and we're all quiet and look above, is the equivalent of visiting the most beautiful cathedral in the world. In that microhabitat is where birds such as the Varsha Chifornis will be hanging around. Also, as the clouds come over and it's not so sunny, we can pull the skiff out of the shade and then enjoy beautiful white ear jacamar. But again, we move the skiff a little further upstream and pull the skiff again into the shade under an enormous tree. And in there, as well, quiet and look around, we may discover wonders such as the American picnic kingfisher or even the rarer green and rufous kingfisher. This is all in that floatable forest called the Barsha. Then we pull out again and we look in the sub canopy and the canopy and we'll be exposed to feeding flocks or a fruiting tree attracting wonderful tanagers, such as the paradise tanager, honey creepers, and dacnesses, such as this yellow belly dacnus. By the time we've done some of the white water rivers, we'll start exploring black water rivers. And the forest there, it's different, ultra similar. It's the diversity, the richness is lower but they're highly specialized species, such as this black tail ember. And I wanna highlight that the river and forest that occurs in black water rivers, we call it different. We name it Igapo or Igapo. In the Igapo, we'll be exposed also to trogons, like this blue crown trogon. But one important aspect of our trip is finding wood creepers. And let me explain why. Wood creepers are a sign of a healthy forest. If you're seeing a good number of wood creepers, means the forest structure is basically untouched. In Blackwater rivers, we were looking for Seamers wood creeper, a rare bird that only recently, and thanks to our cruises, we have learned so much about its natural history. In the Whitewater rivers, we'll be looking for the astonishing long bill wood creeper, one that uses its long bill to explore tank bromeliads in search for amphibians and insects. Now, beyond these forest types occurring along rivers, we may find swamps. And in those swamps, there'll be 
islands of forest where the Hoatzin, the unique Hoatzin is found. This to us is like a flying cow. And again, when you join us, we'll let you know why. But another habitat that is non-forested are the river islands. These river islands build up with sediments carried out by the rivers. And their birds occur exclusively on these river islands. And here is a word that you need to learn when you come to our Amazon cruise, spine tails. Yes, we will see various species of spine tails. We'll look for yellow chink spine tail, which is probably the rarest of all. But then red and black, sorry, red and white spine tail white belly spine tail, dark breasted spine tail, and the incredible Parker spine tail. The River Island also hosts birds that are not so colorful, but are difficult to find elsewhere, such as the Riverside Tyrant, or the astonishing black and white amber. All of those are only found in these river islands. We also pay attention to bird species that have specialized diets, such as the black color hogs. So when we want to see it, we'll look for some marshes with shallow water with fishes coming out to feed on the flooded area. That's where the black color hog will be. But also we'll look for birds that have specialized habitats, such as the point tail palm creeper. This bird occurs only in palm stands of Mauritia, not on every palm, but only on Mauritia palms. Now, I gave you a little overview how we find birds, how many habitats we visit. Let me tell you a little bit about our great ship, Zafiro. We have used in the last 22 years several ships, and we have come to the conclusion that this is our best option of all of it. The reason is, it brings great comfort, amazing crew, and an incredible open deck. The combination of these three factors is what makes a trip successful. The Zafiro has beautiful, spacious cabins, all facing to the river. You can see the river from your bed. Have a wonderful dining room with glasses around where you can see the whole environment around you. It has a lounge that is all air conditioned in case you want to keep inside nice temperature during noon time, or it has an open deck, which is like a canopy platform. The crew makes such a special deal with us, and the captain is always so nice with us that upon request, he can pull the ship a little aside to the forest. So we'll be birding actually at canopy level. Now inside the ship, the upper deck offers great, great birding, as I said, and the lounge is a great opportunity for reading, enjoying, and attend lectures. That's why the Amazon Cruise is a great program to bring a non burdening spouse, friend, or relative, because they can still enjoy the amenities of the ship while you go birding and enjoying wildlife outside. The Safiro has 19 excellent suites, including the master suite, is air conditioned throughout. The Peruvian cuisine is well represented in the ship. It's famous worldwide. But what I love, still they can meet any special diet. Be ready for incredible Amazon fruit juices. You'll feel you'll be exposing to the most exotic fruit, is, fruit, fruit juices at all, of all. You will be amazed to be exposed to the most wonderful Amazon fruit juices, which are exotic fruit juices. Now, I'd like to finish my presentation telling you about our daily program. Have you noticed the skiff or flat bottom? We offer two morning departures. So we have a very early breakfast, go out, be there the crack of dawn, return for a mid-morning break to use the restrooms, or to let those who want to stay till late and join us in the late morning outing. Then we go back to the ship, we have a great siesta, and then we have an afternoon departure. Cold water and soft drinks are always trips. 
One of the great advantage of the late afternoon outings is that often it will offer views of birds flying to roost. I cannot put in words the meaning of being there, sitting on the skid, and having thousands, if not tens of thousands, of parakeets flying overhead to a roost. The sound, the movement, the action, the details that you can see in all this ocean of birds in flight, it's something you'll never forget. Besides all these morning activities, we will also offer a night outing, and this will be our great opportunity to look for birds such as the common potoo, night jars or goat suckers such as the ladder tail night jar. We'll go owling, we'll look for the incredible spectacle owl, or even the boat bill heron. These are birds that occur at night. The Amazon, it's live 24 hours. So you will see light no matter what time you go and explore. So let me tell you a quick summary of you're about to learn and be exposed in the Amazon. In previous trips, we have recorded over 20 species of birds of prey, including hog eagles. We have seen up to 10 species of primates, including the pygmy marmoset, which is the smallest primate in the world, or the active saddleback tamarind, or the astonishing and curious monk sapi. There are very few places on planet Earth where you'll be able to see more than 10 species of woodpeckers. The Amazon is one of those. How about this? About 19 species of cetaceans. That means macaws, parrots, parakeets, and parrotlets. That is an astonishing number for just one biome. And above all that, you'll be seeing tanagers, colorful tanagers every day, including this wonderful mass crimson tanager. There'll be paradise tanagers, green and gold tanagers, honey creepers, darknesses, and you know what? They'll also be hummingbirds, as well as impressive reptiles and amphibians. If there is one of the few places, if there is a place to find a Cayman Lisa, will be our Amazon cruise. We may come across poison dart frogs. We have gone across the Ray Air Amazonian anaconda in one or two occasions. So we'll always be looking for, we'll always be alert, we'll always be searching. No cruise to the Amazon is complete without a visit to a community. So we offer an optional visit to a community where you will learn about their economy, their struggles, their belief, their organization. How do you adapt your life to living in a great highway that has only water? We will also learn about their practice, how much they depend on the fish life. And here is a very important aspect of our program we do pay entrance fee to all this community to explore the rivers they very much protect. Not all these areas are protected from the legislation standpoint, but they're protected by the local communities. They know that if they don't cut down the trees, they know that if they protect wildlife, it will mean an income every year. So by doing that, we are also encouraging conservation by these local communities. Fuck, I'm proud to say that this Van Cruz is called by the one and only Doris Valencia. She is Peruvian, great eyes, great ears, impressive knowledge of wildlife and impressive knowledge about the history of her country. And by my good friend and colleague, Andy Whitaker, who's been one of the model in my professional life, incredible ears, incredible eyes, and impressive knowledge of Amazonian wildlife. But I can't say that's all. We always use our Titleist band called the Ferruginous Pygmy Owl, because anytime there comes a pygmy owl around, you'll see hordes of tanagers, uh, ant birds, hummingbirds, you name it. There'll be birds trying to chase them away. So he frequently 
gets to be called the employee of the cruise because he helped us find birds. No trip will be complete without the assistance of great local guides and a superb expedition leader. The Peruvian people are great ambassadors of the Amazon. I've been proud to work with Angel Cardenas as our expedition leader to solve all kinds of problems and still shares all his passion and knowledge of the Amazon. Great local guides, great crew who happens to be musicians and offer great musical concerts at night. Our Amazon River Cruise will be pleased to have you around. Please call or contact Greg Lopez if you want more information. And I also encourage you to consider joining us in the trip trip run by or guided by Doris Valencia and a local leader. That will be a comprehensive view of not only the Amazon, but one of the greatest cultures of all. With that, as we see this wonderful blue and yellow macaw flying away, we want to let you know that's been a great pleasure for us to be guiding all of you for all these years. And we can only look for to see you in our greatest place in the planet, the Amazon. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining us on this presentation. Uh, we thank David Escanio, uh, who always does a, an outstanding job in presenting these webinars. Um, I am joined here, uh, Victor Emanuel and also Greg Lopez, uh, tour operations manager. Um, our Amazon River Cruise, as, as you have now heard, we are offering a $1,000 early registration discount uh, that uh, is good through August the 1st. Uh, we do have these two departures next year, uh, January 25th through February 4th and February 15th through 25th. Uh, at this time, we know that the first the first departure is uh, approximately half full already. Um, the second one has got registrations also with a bit more space still at this time. Birds of the Northern Kingdoms of Peru are our, our pre -trip, our pre trip with Doris Valencia, which you just heard David discuss. This uh, this extension is available uh, for both of our, or this pre-trip extension is available for both of our cruises next year. And I do want to say a little bit about this. It, it used to be uh, uh, until a couple of years ago that we used to offer Machu Picchu as a pre-trip option uh, that could, in complement to our Amazon River Cruise. The problem that we found is that after so many years of offering these, these programs, January was often problematic at Machu Picchu because of excessive rain. And so there would be flooding on the rivers. Occasionally the railroad, uh, the rail line that we used to access Machu Picchu uh, could be out of commission due to mudslides and so on. So our Birds of the Northern Kingdoms of Peru pre-trip visits uh, a different area where it's drier. And uh, as, as, you, as the, the information here uh, implies, uh, you would. This is a birding trip uh, to see some special birds, but also with some uh, important cultural aspects too. That is with Doris Valencia, who is this really outstanding uh, Peruvian guide who we work with really as much as we can because she's so good. Before we have questions, this is Victor Emanuel. Let me add, over the last 40 or 50 years, I've traveled all over the world to over 50 countries, many, many tours. If you told me there was only one of the trips I've done that I could repeat, it would be the Amazon. My favorite trip I've ever done. I can't recommend it enough. Sign up for this trip. We have a question here from Susan. Uh, she noticed that the Northern Peru trip ends January 26th and the Amazon trip starts January 25th. So it looks like there's a discrepancy in the dates. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, we can. Um, basically, where that where those those overlapping dates come in is that where it, you have a departure day for one trip. So hypothetically, if somebody wanted to take only 
the pre-trip and not the cruise, uh, then you would depart at the time that other people are arriving for the cruise. Uh, these, these two programs are designed to, to come together seamlessly. Uh, we had several questions come in uh, that are related. They want to know how active is the tour? Is there much walking on uneven ground, uh, getting in and out of the boats? How is that handled? And they say the sides of the boats appear to be high enough to provide back support. Is that true? You want to answer this one, Victor, or should I? Well, there's not that you're on the boat. You're going up the streams in small boats. You're not doing hardly any walking except on the ship itself. And you can walk at your own pace. And uh, so there's very little walking. And what was the second part? If there's back support, it says the sides of the boat appear to be high to provide back support. Yeah, there is. Um, these, these these smaller boats, what we what we what we call skiffs. They're they're, they're motorized flat bottom skiffs, and there is indeed back support. Depending on the style of the skiff, sometimes you're sitting uh, across with your back to the edge of the you're facing into the boat, your back is up against the side. So yes, there's back support. In other situations, you're actually sitting in a chair. Uh, it, it, it depends on the, the type of skiff that is being used, but the general answer is yes, there is back support. Let me just say this trip is appropriate for anyone, regardless mm -hmm. of their physical condition or stamina, because as I say, you're riding in these skiffs, you're on the boat, walking around the boat at your own pace, uh, it's very comfortable, a perfect trip for anyone. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we heard from David here. Uh, David has led these led these trips now for Vent for probably at least 10 years, uh, probably longer than that. Uh, I know Victor has made a number of excursions to the Amazon. I personally have been on two of these. And it's just a beautiful experience. That That's really the best way to sum this up. There, there's just so much to a trip on the Amazon, and one of my favorite things that uh, of all the of all the material that David mentioned and presented, something that he didn't have a chance to speak to was the fact that being on those skiffs in the early morning or late in the day when you're running on the river and it, it's warm, uh, the sun coming up or the sun going down, it's just a fabulous experience to be out amid all that nature and on that river. And on many days, you're also, the day starts with a spectacular sunrise and ends with a glowing sunset. It just, uh, it really just doesn't get any better than this. I want to add, over the years, we've looked at different boats and used different boats. And this is by far the best boat we've ever used and better than any other company uses. It is a little more expensive, but it's worth it to have a boat of this quality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Roy uh, and Debbie have a question. Is there any opportunity to fish on the Amazon River during free time? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, what they would do, it, it, it's, not, it's not something, though, that you can just do uh, like whenever you feel like. What they would do during the trip is they would get uh, a show of hands, engage the level of interest for those who might be interested in, in, in an excursion on one of the boats to go back in and drop a line in the water. Um, Greg, there's a question here from Joanne. Uh, she asked if she registers soon, how quickly does she purchase trip insurance within 14 days of registration within 14 days of registration that's a good question uh kathy uh asked what are there good odds of seeing the river dolphins yeah it's it's you know we <laughs> we don't like to use the word guaranteed when you're out because any you know things can happen but it, it's 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 pretty close to guaranteed both types uh there the gray river dolphin is more numerous um, but we, we generally have no problem seeing numbers of both, the gray and the pink. And you get very close looks of them. Yeah. Sometimes they come out right next to the boat or right next to the boat. Yeah. They're an amazing dolphin. Roy does ask, does the ship provide fishing gear or do they supply their own? No, they do supply it. They do supply it. Great. Uh, James wonders, uh, what is your experience with COVID on the trip? 
So the answer is we have not had any COVID. We, uh, coming out of the pandemic, again, uh, as we have written about, uh, the <clears throat> vent began operating trips again following uh, the, the, the development of vaccines in late April of 2021. So therefore, that means that we have operated two Amazon River cruises since then. We did one in, we did, we operated in January of 2022. And then we had another one this year, January, February, 2023. And in both cases, the trips went, uh, the, the, they went off and completed with zero cases of COVID on board. Another question coming in. Yeah, Jan wonders if we're going to be offering it in 2025. Yes, we will. And as a matter of fact, that trip, um, if it's not already up on our website, it will be in the coming days. And to that note, let me just say this. Um, at this time, we are currently loading 2025 dates into our system. And those 25 tours are beginning to populate the website. The Amazon River Cruise uh, is one of those trips for which we have firmed up dates for 25. And I don't know, um, Greg, if you have the dates off the top of your head. I do not. It's late January. Yeah, I want to say approximately January 29th through February 8th. And we do it then because that is definitely the best time to go to the Amazon because of the fact that you go up the side streams. Other companies do it in the fall or do it in the summer. That's not the time to go. The time to go is the time that we've picked. We've done over 10, 15 years, so we know very well what we're doing. Well, Gordon wonders, uh, do you happen to know how many species you expect to see on the trip? Um, I would have to take a look at the field report. I, I want to say 200 to 250, somewhere in that range, but I, I, I would definitely need to look at the field report to, to confirm that. And it's not only the number, but the quality. I mean, and the, and the incredible looks we get, you get at them. Uh, it is a true, marvelous birding and nature experience, better than any that we offer, or anybody offers anywhere. Altitude, is there an altitude problem at the start of the trip? No. Well, so the trip, the trip, of course, starts and ends in Lima. And Lima is not high. Uh, you know, when you think of the, the, the high altitude or the higher elevation of Peru, uh, many people think of Cusco. Altitude is not an issue at all. It's actually just above the coast. We also, we have a lovely hotel in Lima, mm -hmm. where right around the hotel, there's some birds you can see. All right. Yeah. So uh, Ben has just confirmed that Lima sits at sea level. So no, that is a definitive no. And, and the highest altitude in Lima is 528 feet. Yeah, so. Roy and Debbie uh, ask about the discount. Is it $1,000 discount per person? Yes. Yes, per person and double occupancy. James wonders if there's museums. Do you visit any museums in Lima or would that be uh, um, uh, arrangements beforehand? That would be arrangements beforehand. There are some wonderful museums. Uh, you could do it instead of going to the coast, which I wouldn't recommend. But if you come a day early, there are some wonderful museums. There's the Gold Museum being one of them. And uh, the museum with uh, other great museums that we might be, you'd have to come early or stay after the trip and do it. And we would take care of arranging that. Lisa uh, wonders about the rainy season. How is the rainy season? Well, this is not normally the rainy season. You can have rain like in many parts of the world almost any time. Mm -hmm. What we're finding over a lot of the South America right now, because of the uh, Nino and the Nina, and when they switch back and forth, it's not a very really rainy year uh, in Panama and in Colombia, where we're doing tours in Ecuador, is not much rain. But uh, it's not a very rainy time of year. No, it's not. But you know, to be clear, though, that doesn't mean that you might not have some rain. Uh, you know, there are there are storms that can come up, but but it, but when it does rain. It, it generally isn't more than, you know, a storm with the occasional heavy downpour. You're not looking at being socked in, losing, you know, a day or more at a time to continuous rain. We don't experience that. 
we were thinking that late January was the rainy season. No, no. Most, most, uh, the, the rainy season usually begins later than that. I mean, you know, the, the, the climate all around the world is we're all aware is doing some, is, is some of the traditional norms are, are no longer holding up, but uh, we feel comfortable letting you know that uh, this is a very good time of year and excessive rain is definitely not expected. And the other thing I want to mention is you never know what you're going to see. One time when I was doing the trip, we came around the bend and on the side of the river where there was some tall grass, there were like 500 fork-tailed flycatchers down in the mm -hmm. grass just had migrated and were, were waiting there. You never know what you're going to see. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, you know what? I will also add to this, uh, if we still have our viewers with us, uh, what I will add to this is that um, on occasion, and it, it's possible that David, uh, that David uh, are already covered this, but one of the questions that we are asked occasionally is why we operate our tours to the Amazon in the January, February period. You know, there are a number of different companies that operate Amazon River Cruises and they tend to go all year long. The reason why is because this is the high water mark. After, after it has rained in the previous autumn and into the start of winter, when the rain then tapers off, you've got a lot more water in the river basin. And it means that we can access a lot more areas besides the main channel of the river. When, when, if you go, if should you go with a, a different company and go at a different time of the year, like July, August, September, you're more likely to, your, your movements are more likely to be confined to the main river channel. And, you know, not that that's a bad thing, it's just that by going at this time of the year, you do have access to a lot more of the landscape. And going up those side channels is one of my favorite things because of the birds you see right next to you in the side channel. Yeah. Uh, we had one more question come in from Franta. Uh, do, does Vent submit to eBird? Yes, absolutely. Well, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending today's webinar. If you have any further questions, feel free to email me, ben at ventbird.com. We thank you so much for your time today. Hope you sign up soon.